It's Ray Weibel, one of the certified instructors here with the Rotary Swing Golf. I have a swing for you to look at this evening. That is Mark O'Meara, the uh, two-time major champion and a uh, longtime professional. And uh, this swing is being analyzed because actually one of the members requested that we take a look at this. And it's a very, very good golf swing. It, there's an awful lot to learn from, from Mark's swing, and it may be one that you've overlooked, uh, certainly one that I did. But once you start to look at it, it's a very simple swing, but it's very elegant in its simplicity. And there's a reason that it looks so simple. And that is this little yellow line here, which is the axis tilt that Omira establishes at his takeaway, carries through right through the rest of his golf swing. And I have to tell you right up front, that's going to be the emphasis of this analysis. The vast majority of students that come to me uh, either in line, online or in person or in online groups, they come, they're standing straight up and down over the ball. Uh, we've somewhere along the line, somebody said that you should look like a shortstop or a linebacker or a goaltender, and you should stand straight up and down as if you're expecting uh, some the ball to come to you or a defender to come to you. Well, the fact of the matter is uh, that's not what we do in golf. In golf, nobody's coming at you, and you're not going to go chase a ball. The ball's here. It's not going anywhere until you hit it. We need this axis tilt for a lot of reasons, that, and I'm going to explain it to you in a few minutes, and Chuck has already has, and I'm going to, I'm going to point you to the right place to look. So let's take a look at this swing, and you're going to see, I'm going to leave that little yellow line there, which is this sternum line that it's set up. You see, is it's a very calm swing. It's just everything just looks simple. There's not a whole lot of not a whole lot of motion going on. His pace, he's not a real fast uh, swing. It's just you know, it's just rock solid, and it's easy to just overlook how good the swing is. Beautiful extension here, uh, and just hard to argue with that. If you look at it down the line, you'll see that this left arm is out over the toes. The club head is on the hands. This one's blurred. I've seen other ones that aren't blurred. He's really got a straight up and down club. You'll see in his setup, the other thing we always, I always want to mention to students, the knees and his hip bend are what set apart professional golfers uh, from most amateurs. You will see how crisp these lines are even in these baggy slacks uh, and how crisp this hiss line is and if you bring up professional swings this is the, the, the first thing that just jump out at me uh, looking at swings all the time is this is not something that most people achieve uh, and it's worth spending the time in the mirror to get this kind of look. There's very very high degree of precision in that it doesn't happen by accident that's mirror work and the time spent this is somebody that's spending time in the mirror of course it's a profession but if you want to have a really good golf swing it starts in the setup and he and and, and no more case than uh, mark a mirror here in his axis tilt you see he's just a little bit under plane you'll notice he does not get deep i talk about this almost every time he's uh, really out on his ankle bone in front of his ankle bone and You'll notice that he's lost the cup in his fore, uh, his left wrist. It's flat. Uh, if you look at Chuck, he's very flat with that left wrist. And so the shaft of the club, and the club head, and the long bones of the forearm are all in the same plane. This just simplifies the downswing immensely. You don't have to manipulate anything. And it's another reason this swing looks so simple. If I go over to this face-on view, You'll notice that when he gets up here to the top, you'll see that he still matches this axis tilt that he established at his setup. And you could just draw a line from the center of his shoelaces right up to the center of his deltoid. And you'll just see how this just mirrors this axis tilt he had in, in his setup and puts him in a great position now. To rotate back to the ball. 
most students, when you get them in axis tilt, and they're not used to it, they say, I'm never going to get back to the ball. But actually, if you're over the top, you probably won't. But if you learn to use your lower body uh, the way that Umira does here, the way Chuck does, I'll show you in a few minutes, you can get back to the ball, and you will get back to the ball. All right. This shot here on the left, iron shot that he's sitting down at the, uh, the Masters, actually the year he won. You'll see that he doesn't hold his shoulders a tremendous long time, but he holds them long enough. You'll also notice he doesn't have any kind of squat move. This is a, this is a move that is really flat in the pelvis, uh, but you'll notice he keeps his weight back. He's able to get his weight back onto his lead glute. Um, but he doesn't have a big, you know, he doesn't have a big squat. I'm going to show you Luke Donald in a little bit, and you'll see that, that Luke really squats down into this leg. Amira doesn't do that, but then he gets his hands out in front. Now, this angle doesn't do it justice. This one will do better, and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you Luke and Chuck here in a little bit, and you'll see exactly what this looks like. But uh, this is a really wonderful impact position. And then what I think is his best position of all is right there. And I'll show you that face on. Now, as, we, as he comes to this ball, he is just going to rotate around that spinal tilt that he set up. You see, he's going to come back. He starts out this, this swing. He's his hip here is on his ball line. You see how much weight transfer is involved. He's gotten back to neutral joint. And he's just holding his shoulders as well as he can. And holding all that lag. Look at how much lag he's holding on to at this late stage of the game. Ideal. And you see the head back He's increased his uh, axis tilt at this point with secondary axis tilt because his hips have moved forward. His head is just holding back while his, while his shoulders and all continue through the ball and down the line. And then he gets to this beautiful position right there. Now this ball with a driver, this ball is probably 75 yards down the line by this point. And look where he's looking. Same thing here. Um, if memory serves, this was a 9 iron or an 8 iron. It's probably best part of the way up to the apex of his flight. His head is just not going anywhere, and it's allowed him to rotate his, his hips, be on neutral joint alignment, looking, and everything is just released beautifully. So, how is that different? How is that different from being in, uh, having that lack of axis tilt? Well, we got some videos about that. Over in phase two, you'll see importance of the axis tilted setup. It's only a little two and a half minute video, but it's hugely important. Chuck is going to lay out in that video for you the difference between being in this position, which is what Mark O'Meara was in, and being in this position. And if you don't have adequate axis tilt in the setup, you will end up here. Some stage of it. The, 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 you know, the more upright you are, the more you're going to rear back at the top because you're just going to run out of room. And, and it's inevitable. Um, and honestly, there are times when you look at a setup and maybe you don't, I don't pay enough attention to the axis tilt, and I'll see this guy rear back at the top and say, oh, golly, he didn't have his axis tilt. And you go back and look at the setup again, there it is. It's just not there. So, what, again, most people, when they set up with axis tilt, that are not used to it, saying, I'm never going to get back to the ball. Here's the way to get around that. And, and really, it's, it's the only way that I know of. you got to start with this little shot here. This little 9-3 to three shot. This was taken back in February of 2009. It's an important piece of film uh, while you're studying... RST because this is a this is a kind of a bedrock drill for you is to hit this little shot. You need to hit this 
until you're really proficient with it and you need to continue to hit it after you're proficient with it. So you can see his hip. There's an important thing going on here. I'm going to draw a little line on his hip. I'll move that a little bit. Actually, it's not a little line, it's a fat line. But we'll try that again. Put that right there on his hip. And now watch. He's going to start. And you can watch the, the creases on his shirt. The hips are going to start forward. The creases are going to... The arms are going to continue back. And this upper lower body separation is going to increase. Now, without the axis tilt being established in the setup, you wouldn't be able to do this. Because the first move would have to be some kind of correction from the top to get on the same plane. So you can see the you can see the hip shift, I mean the weight shift, and you can see him get in the neutral joint. And now now you get into this great impact position. This is the RST impact position. If you, this is what this is what we work on is that you've got this this the the shoulders are square, the sternum is in that axis tilt, the hands are in front, that de-lofts the club, and uh, and turns you know the the six iron into the five iron. Rory, on the other hand, a lot of amateurs end up here, but but they end up here with square shoulders. Rory's shoulders are wide open, and he's he's got this bend in his right elbow. Um, this is what we're working on over here, and the axis tilt makes this 100% easier to achieve. Two things that you, the other uh, video that you might look at in here is over in phase four. We have the RST necktie drill. It's a lighter treatment of it. It doesn't last particularly long, but it's well worth the view, if nothing else, just to see the rare sight um, of Chuck Winton in a necktie. I'm confident. Um, you're not going to find this on YouTube anytime soon. So, this little drill here, this little half swing, is important. Now, watch the head stay back, the arms release. This is the same position Omira gets in right here. And this is what you aim for. And you, one way to achieve that, most people when they get into here are going to hold on to the club or do something with it. The left hand release drill which is over in phase five is a very important drill and what you have to do is to do this left hand only, brush in the mat, then add your right hand by just barely making contact with the left. The right hand does nothing other than go for the ride and you'll feel your shoulder pull through, but get in the habit of looking down at the ball until your hands, your shoulder actually pulls your chin up out of the way. That is how you get through a golf ball. The other person I wanted to show you here, and this is probably my favorite swing at the moment, it's just, uh, it's just hard to argue with how good this swing is is Luke Donald. Now Omira is very very flat in his pelvis as he comes to the ball. Luke is not. Look at all the knee bend that's going on in this swing. You'll notice there isn't any of that in this swing. It's very 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 muted. Chuck's pelvis is essentially flat. This is easier to, to learn the weight shift. People start talking about tiger squat and all that. Well, here's Luke's squat is pronounced and people go after this too early. You don't go after that until you can you can hit this shot all day long. When you can do that, then start working on the squat. But what he does, and I wanted to show you this, he, by having that squat he gets tons of ground effect. Luke's not a big guy. He hits it plenty long enough to be one of the top players in the world, not the top player in the world. I've shown you three professional golfers here, and they all look pretty darn similar right about this point in the game. 
So, and all of them had that wonderful axis tilt in the beginning. I'm going to tell you, if you want to look like that, you're not going to do it unless you have that axis tilt in your setup. So, we have some information in here about how you can get there. And I hope uh, that myself and the other instructors can help you achieve your goals. Plenty of information in here uh, to study. If you need assistance, individual assistance, we have online lessons. If you'd like to join the online group, uh, I think it's, we've had a lot of positive experiences with that. And we have a couple openings right at the moment. You may consider that. You can submit film and, and get frequent feedback. But uh, I'm hoping all of you guys and gals that are working on your swings can look like this by next spring. And we'll here to help you. Take care.